All right, for HIV AIDS, we're going to look at what type of virus HIV is. And then it's very important to understand how the HIV virion is able to specifically interact with the human host cells. And that's going to be because of specific molecules on both the surface of the HIV virion and the human T cells. And then there is a big difference between when someone is HIV positive and when someone is actually classified as AIDS. So we're going to look at a couple of diagrams, including the graph in table 18.2. And so all of these are items that you will need to be familiar with. So HIV is caused by a retrovirus. And this retrovirus is in the genus Lentivirus. So if you need to know the causative agent of HIV or where that virus is found, the proper genus is lentivirus. And the retroviruses in general have the potential to cause cancer. And the reason for this is that they are able to integrate into the host DNA. And so with the retrovirus, the virus is an RNA uh, virus. And so here you have a single-stranded RNA, and that is what the that is the genomic material, the nucleic acid material of the virus. And the reverse transcriptase actually allows for the replication of double-stranded DNA from the RNA. And so then the host cell is then able to make the viral proteins. So then another important enzyme that is important to HIV is the integrase, all right? And the integrase allows the retrovirus to permanently integrate viral genes into the host genome. So this is where it uh, is incorporated or integrated into the host DNA, and then it is carried with those cells as they reproduce, or if they reproduce. So with the structure of HIV, you have the virion here. So it is a um, complex virus. Here is the capsid, that nice icosahedral shape. You have the RNA strand on the interior, and then you have the different proteins. Here is that integrase. Here is the reverse transcriptase. And then here is a protease molecule that allows it to degrade proteins. And all of these are very important. However, you have these proteins that are on the surface of the HIV virion. This purple one here is called GP120. And what isn't showed in this diagram is another very important molecule called GP121. Or sorry, GP41. Both GP120 and GP41 are critical for a specific interaction with the host T cell. All right, so the host T cell has to have the CD4 molecule on it. So HIV is going to infect cells that are CD4 positive. And you may have heard that term before. And also they need a co-receptor CCR5. Both of these receptors have to be on the host cell in order for the virion to attach to the host cell and get into the cell. And if you... Um, have heard about individuals who are immune to HIV. Um, there aren't very many, but there have been a couple of documented cases, and one case is very um, famous. This person is actually deficient in his CCR5. And um, because the person, um, or if a person doesn't have the CCR5 molecule or that receptor is mutated, then you don't have this proper interaction. The HIV molecule isn't able to specifically interact and get into the host T cell, and then it can't replicate because it has to get inside of the cell to replicate and proliferate and do the damage. If the HIV virus gets into a person but doesn't get into a cell, it doesn't do anything. There's another case where um, an HIV patient, HIV positive patient, 
uh, for whatever reason, needed a bone marrow transplant. And that person was given a bone marrow transplant from someone who was known to have a mutation in the CCR5 co-receptor. And eventually, over time, that person has been cleared of HIV. Right? They can no longer detect any virion, any virus in that person's body. And it's specifically because the virus, once it got inside the host cell, um, all um, the with the bone marrow transplant process, they killed off all of the white blood cells, and eventually those are going to die. And all of the new CD4 positive T cells do not express this co-receptor. So over time, as that virus in that person popped out, it didn't be, it wasn't able to get back into a host cell and continue um, its cycle. So HIV um, infection in AIDS really is a very broad spectrum of clinical syndrome or clinical signs and symptoms. And initially, the symptoms of HIV are directly tied to two things: the level of virus in the blood and then the levels of T cells in the blood. All right, so how much virus is in the blood? Well, it usually isn't a lot of free-floating virus because once it gets in, it gets into the T cell and it stays there. All right, then there are levels of T cells in the blood. Eventually, or initially, those are quite high, but as the virus kills off the T cells, the T, cells, the T cell number then decreases. All right, the initial symptoms of someone who is, who just contracted HIV is going to be fatigue, diarrhea, uh, weight loss sometimes, and neurological changes. But the neurological changes don't happen very often, but rather you have the fatigue, the diarrhea, weight loss. And then eventually, there are many opportunistic infections or different types of cancers. Now, when a person has um, moves over to the point of being considered or classified as having AIDS, they are going to have to have um, AIDS-defining illnesses or ADIs there. And what this is going to signify is, in addition to these different types of illnesses, there's going to be pronounced wasting of body mass. And the body mass is going to lead, because of just overall weight loss, the person's overall health is deteriorating. And then there is diarrhea, because the GI tract is being affected. And therefore, there is poor nutrient absorption. There can also be fever, fatigue, sore throat, night sweats. Sometimes there can be a very generalized entire body rash. There's also lymph nodes that are going to be swollen throughout the body. And you're going to see this actually in chains of lymph nodes as well, not just individual lymph nodes. And then um, towards the end, there can be neurological effects. But this is the actual list of AIDS-defining illnesses. So once a person's CD4 positive T cells drops below a certain level, which we'll see on the next slide, your body is no longer, that person's body is no longer able to fight off infections. And anywhere in the body can be affected. And so here you have those different areas. You can have the skin, mucous membranes, uh, the nervous system, cardiovascular system, respiratory tract, GI tract, and then the gastrourinary and or reproductive. So um, within these, uh, just look at the list. Some of these can affect immunocompetent individuals, people who have a competent immune system, such as herpes simplex. Uh, virus here. All right, so herpes simplex can cause uh, just mouth ulcers or on the flip side over here, uh, the ulcers in the uh, urinary tract system, reproductive tract, 
Um, but with the AIDS patient, these are going to be chronic instead of just lasting uh, five to ten days, maybe. All right, on the skin side as well, or also, you've got Kaposi's sarcoma here. All right, Kaposi's sarcoma is seen here, an example here, where you have these different uh, types of lesions. And if you've ever seen Philadelphia, which is quite old, uh, maybe 20 years now, but I don't know what your age is. Um, this is what Tom Hanks' character had that his bosses or colleagues were able to see, those large skin lesions. Now, a lot of these diseases that you're seeing are going to be caused by viruses or fungal organisms. Immunocompetent individuals often don't get these very severe fungal infections because fungal organisms are large and it takes a lot of effort really on their part to get past our immune system. So if, and just the physical effects of our immune system, the first defense. If your immune system is not competent, they're not going to be able, they're not going to have that, those barriers. Um, and then cancers, all right? Our immune system actually does a pretty good job at protecting us from virally induced cancers. But again, in the AIDS patient, their immune system is just gone, really. And so then they're going to come down with those diseases. All right, so this is a, a very good figure to focus on and to just spend time and look at what the different um, lines mean. All right, here you have a timeline. All right, the first or infection. All right, here's the first phase, and that's the initial infection. And if we look at the different lines, all right, the green is going to be the virus antigen. How much virus antigen is in the blood? And that's composition or the component concentration within the blood. So virus level peaks right at about a week after the initial infection, but then it drops uh, pretty good um, after a couple of weeks. And the reason for that is the virus is getting into um, the cells and it's going to specifically get into CD4 positive T cells because again of that specific interaction and um, it's going to replicate and it's going to kill off some CD4 positive T cells and that's what this purple number is. So you have a small drop and as those CD4 positive T cells die because of the virus effect, the virus is going to be released. So you have a high amount of virus in the blood right here, but then eventually it goes into those CD4 positive T cells and it goes latent. It gets incorporated into the DNA and it just kind of disappears. All right, and so here you're at about, I don't know, a month or so. The red or the orange line here, level of antibodies to one or more HIV antigens. So your B cells are responding and you've got high levels of antibody. And this is where a person is seropositive, right? Serology based. They are positive for HIV because they have come into contact with the virus and their immune system has responded. All right, now here you've got this uh, phase three, which is a critical number of years. This can be three years, it can be 20 years, where a person is very healthy. Uh, they still have functioning level of CD4 positive T cells. The virus level is low. Uh, but then eventually their CD4 positive T cells drop. The effect of the virus in those cells, the cells just can't overcome, and they eventually drop. And this is the hallmark point here of 200 CD4 positive T cells or less. All right, so once the person's immune system achieves this very low mark, that's really when they they cross over to that AIDS um, category rather than being HIV positive. And because their CD4 positive T cell numbers are low, they start to come down with those different types of infections. And then this is just the summary table.
of HIV and AIDS.